Do you rate Wayne um, Randy or also, is Randy Wayne on you? Um, you know, this, I should ask Randy. I would say I wait more on him because I'm more organized than him. He, we like, we'll take over and unders me and the kids on how many times he's going to get out of the car and go back into the house in between the time we prepare to leave and the time we actually <laughs> drive out of the name. We're like, Jesus Christ. We're like one. I'm Josh Sigmund and I'm a mortgage lender. I'm also a geek for money, not just earning it and saving it, but literally everything about it. I love that money has rules. It has its truths. I love investment strategies, and I love making money work for us. For so many, money is emotional. For me, it's logical, like a puzzle. My passion is also helping others with their money. I love looking at people's finances, dissecting their puzzle, and rebuilding with strategy and purpose, and I'm really good at it. I'm making this podcast about my money strategies, not the things that are written in books or sold in programs. It's a podcast outlining the lessons I've learned and used for the past 15 years. These strategies help me and those who use them save more, give more, create wealth, and retire early. Let me teach you how to build your net worth. You ready? Welcome to Sigmund Sense. We're all waiting, Bren. We're all I'm waiting. ready. Okay, just making sure I because here we go again. Here we are. I am ready. Welcome back to Sigmund Sense. Hola. Yeah, we're going to have, a, we had a, a request for a conversation about five ways to get wealthy. This is actually an interesting conversation. It's a brief conversation, but it's an interesting one. And the reason why I say it's interesting is because uh, most of the time, I think Americans are hardwired to get rich quick, Right. Um, I mean, it's just I mean, whatever is the least amount of work, right? I mean, obviously, <laughs> and, uh, and we'll go through several different conversations because, you know, there is lots of ways to make money. Uh, getting wealthy is different. Uh, by the way, I think we should define wealthy because that's, that's something people don't really understand. There's yeah, you're like rich and you hear wealthy. What's the difference? Do you have a difference? You know, I heard the best definition I've heard. What's your definition? I don't know that I have one. I feel like it rich no, and wealthy, mm -hmm. rich and wealthy. What is it? I don't know. I'll need to give me give me a minute. I got to okay. marinate. So the best because uh, I know what I, I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. The best one I've heard is uh, rich is people that. By the way, we're gonna talk financially speaking. So obviously, rich in love and all that stuff too, right? <laughs> but financially speaking, rich is you have the ability to pay for your hobbies and dreams. Rich is you have the ability to pay for your oh, hobbies yeah, you and dreams, this. right? Wealthy is the interest that you earn pays for your hobbies and dreams. So it's not a billion. It's not a million. It's wealthy is if you have, if the interest on your money that you don't have to work for anymore more, can pay for your hobbies and dreams, whatever that is, you're wealthy, yeah. right? Yeah, that's pretty, uh, and so it removes the stigma of I got to be a millionaire or whatever. Like I've, I've met a lot of people that have, uh, in, especially my line of business in San Antonio, Military City, USA. Whoop. Uh, I love that. Whoop. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> You just laughing. <laughs> it's okay. It's just uh, not something that like I've heard go along with Military City USA. Whoop. It's mine. Whoop. It's actually mine. It's new. Is that a tick? Whoop. <laughs> yeah, I've got a. Uh, what, what's that called when you just yell out curse words? That's Tourette's. Tourette's. It's Tourette's. But it my also version can of Tourette's. come in the form of whoop. <laughs> but maybe uh, maybe there's I'm a TV diagnosed. show where they get <laughs> Uh, my point is, is that uh, with military, I see a lot of people that put in, you know, any kind of civil service, but um, 20 years, you get a great pension, like a great pension, uh, especially some military people that go and have a second career and they get a second pension. So think about like a guy that regardless of what rank came out, came out as E6, making a couple of three, four thousand dollars a year of, of income in retirement goes. And now that they went into 18, they finish up at 38. I mean, now they do, they become so a police great. officer for the next 20 years. Now they've got another three to 5,000 of pension yeah. making 10 grand a year. Like in my opinion, huh, like that's wealthy. If that person is a simple person, their house is paid for, they like to travel a couple times a year, like yeah. that's wealthy too. So I don't want to put a stigma around what wealthy looks like. What I would like to say though, is that um, what, what you want to get to a point of is that the interest or your pension or the guaranteed income that you don't have to work for anymore pays for your hopes and dreams. That's the best definition I've got. So, cool. um, so with that, uh, there's some ways to get wealthy that aren't great. Like we're Whoop. not hoping for, <laughs> you know, so the little asterisks are the funny ones we'll start with. <laughs> 
Um, like you, you don't want to get wealthy because of life insurance, right? Because somebody died that you were the benefactor yeah, of, great. right? That's not a great way, but it does happen, right? It does. Um, you certainly don't want to bet on a lottery ticket, but there's a few people in the world that, that have gotten really wealthy yeah. because they gambled on lottery tickets or gambling in general. Um, <laughs> but that's not the ways that we want to talk about I mean, I feel it. like that's the path Walker, Walker's going to take. He's really lucky on the, <laughs> on the lottery tickets. Well, I hope that he is. Uh, <laughs> just make sure he, he does, that's, that's his backup plan. That's not his plan, <laughs> right? Uh, I would say that there are plenty of people that are wealthy doing illegal activities. Uh, like not what? a good like idea. What? Like what? Not a great idea um, because you don't look good in orange. No one does. It's the new black. Uh, I don't know if you've orange heard. new black. Got it. I don't know if you've heard. So, you know, there, there, there's always those things. Um, but I, I'll tell you just from uh, paying attention. But okay, so if, you, yeah. if it's illegal, though. Illegal, yep. I mean, what, what did I say? I thought you, I thought you slurred your words. So You're I just heard a little bit. If it's illegal, uh-huh. well, I guess you have to like launder it, right? To get it into a bank. <laughs> I, I don't it? know. I don't do illegal activities. <laughs> um, that was a test and you passed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't though so but yes i mean because <laughs> people deal drugs people do crazy yeah. things you know uh, white collar crimes are just as bad you know stealing from your boss is, is still embezzling like, yeah like ozark like ozark yeah there you go okay so you have that, to launder it to right. use it so you know those things are the get rich quick schemes and my whole point is like in general what you're going to find is that most people don't make it that way for better or worse they just never make it that way right yeah it's just a marathon right and uh, the marathon's not the problem. The, mar- the 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 problem is is that it's uh, it's just crossing your fingers and hoping, right? So I do want to talk about what when you pay attention and look around, like if you interview a couple millionaires or a couple billionaires, uh, what is it that that they did? What do they have in common? What do the mm-hmm. most of these people have in common? And there are some absolute commonalities for all of them, right? Um, How many billionaires are in San Antonio? Last I checked, there were five. Um, there might be. There Are might any be, of them female? After, not that I know of. I didn't think so either. I thought they were all male. Um, oh well, no. I guess half of them are married. So yes. Yeah. But the earner, uh, not that I, that, yeah. not that I knew of. Um, but I interviewed uh, most of them, and um, I, I think the I think there actually might be a, uh, two more now because of the market this year. Really? Yeah. So there's been a, there's there's been an incredible run. You know, the, unfortunately, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Mm-hmm conversation that you see on the news, you know, there's some truth to that, but it's, you know, but they put themselves in position to capitalize a yeah. uh, big picture, right? Mm-hmm. So what I do want to talk about is the things that are most common when you look at like, what are the common elements of people that really make it in a big way? If that's what you're looking for, maybe you're a kid trying to look for inspiration, or maybe you're just trying to, you know, figure it out. There are absolute commonalities. So uh, not self-serving, but absolutely uh, the majority of the wealth in America was created through real estate. So that yeah. would be number one, right? Uh, when you look at it, uh, it's for savings. You know, when you think about a mortgage payment, uh, is for savings because part goes to interest. If you're, you know, if you're escrowed, obviously part goes taxes and insurance. But two things are happening on a monthly basis. Number one is small or large, depending on the time and how and what and how many years are left in your mortgage. A portion is going towards principal reduction, so that's for savings. And historically speaking, over the long term, not guaranteed in a year or three. But over the long ter- term, all real estate long term in the United States has appreciated over the last hundred years, right? Long term, yes. yes. even ten years doesn't always work. You know, you think about uh, the '80s in Texas were not great for real estate. You think about Detroit when the um, or Michigan in general when when the uh, when autos were being built overseas, not great for real estate, right? Uh, so it's not always the case. But over the long term, the, yeah. you're have an appreciating asset. And you're doing four savings, and that's a way to build some real wealth. You know, um, we're looking at. Uh, so I think in terms, if you go back to the definition of what is wealth, it's the ability to pay for your hobbies and dreams with the interest you earn. I'm seeing a lot of people that right now are capitalizing on the last decade of unbelievable appreciation nationwide, and are not putting all that money into their next property. They're downsizing. Uh, mm-hmm. They're leaving states that have high costs of living to move yeah, into states that. with low cost of living. Uh, specifically, what I see daily, obviously, is you know California, California. Oregon, Washington moving to Texas, mm-hmm. where price of real estate's a third or, or less mean, in, yeah. in a lot of cases. And they're not taking all that couple hundred thousand bucks or more when they sold their property. And they're not putting it all in the next house. They're, they're putting, using that money yeah. to, to put into, into retirement. And I've got a couple of business partner financial planners that I work with 
that uh, literally on a daily basis, on a daily basis, I'm able to refer over business to them because there's that much equity scraping that's been happening. Wow. And so, you know, building wealth, wealth long term, I think uh, real estate's in there. One of my favorite books of all time, Rich Dad Poor Dad, gives yeah. a lot of details around this. Um, but, you know, if you get into investing in general, certainly real estate pay, plays a big part uh, because you can have uh, somebody else's money working for you. And that's the biggest uh, reason why I would say real estate goes to the top of the list. The others require a little bit more knowledge and expertise. Right. Uh, but yeah, they do. around real estate, when you think in terms of um, somebody else's money working for you, the appreciation that we were talking about, the let's just say that you made 5% appreciation as an average over time on real, real property. Uh, it's not based on how much you have in the property of your own cash. You're getting a 5% return on the value of the house, whether it's paid for or there's a mortgage or not, right? So if I take you know 10 grand I put in the stock market, I only earn return on the 10,000 I have. Mm -hmm. If I take 10,000 I put into real estate and I was able to buy a $200,000 property with 5% down, oh, my 5% yeah. return is on the 200,000, 200, not yeah. on the 10,000 I put in the property. Yeah. So that's what I mean by why real estate is so effective in building wealth for Americans and why uh, I think there's so many programs to promote home ownership mm -hmm. and the American dream of home ownership is because that's a real way to develop wealth for Americans, okay? Uh, any questions around that as a, as a, I mean, we're just gonna make a quick five list. No, and, I think and, that's, I mean, I, yeah, no, I think that's really good. And I think you broke it down really well. And I've never even thought about like you're appreciating on somebody else's money. Well, in the 200,000, not the, not the 10,000 in the example, mm -hmm. which is, that's a good point. Yep. I like it. And that's also why, uh, you know, it's funny to me. It's not funny to me. I see a lot of, uh, younger people sidelining and staying renting so they can be more mobile for the first 15 years of their life. And like you're paying for somebody else's retirement. Yeah, yeah. Like buy early. Uh, if you're going to be in a house for, if you're going to be in a location. That for would be such a good, that would be a good show. Like let's get somebody that firmly believes in renting because of where they're at in their life mm -hmm. and just like. Tra track just them. Just go, well, just have a conversation about it. Just battle it out. Oh, I'm good with that. Okay. That'd be fun. That'd be, that'd be I would fun. love to hear the mentality. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and I, I I would argue that um, the the pursuit of the happiness piece, right? Like the, most people that want to stay mobile, it's a it's more of a lifestyle choice, and like uh, I want to be a hippie a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, which is a beautiful thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're talking about building wealth, not conducive, not con right? yeah, not conducive. Good, good point. Good point. Um, what was the second one on the list we read? Invest in a business or have ownership in a business. Yeah. So one of the commonalities that you'll see when you talk about what typical de de defined wealthy people have is that they're the guy or girl on top. Like they are the, the pinnacle. They are they have ownership interests in something, right? And um, when you think about that, you, there's a whole lot more risk involved. What is that? What do you mean by that? They're not a, like a silent partner? Silent partner, still owner. They're still an but owner. But you said pinnacle at the top. Yeah. So the, you've got the owner and then you've got the employees. Right, they're at the top. They're, they're, I see what you're saying. Whether it's an okay. LLC, I, an LLC, a partnership, okay. a, a sole proprietorship doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. What they okay. get the benefit of the risk, right? So you got to think about that way. Mm -hmm. uh, at the bottom of the pyramid is no risk, right? Other than job loss. Yeah. But there's if the if the company takes out a million dollar loan and they can't repay it, there's not going to be a personal attack on the personal yeah. finances of those employees. So this is the okay. guy on the top or the girl on the top typically has way more exposure. Uh, they might have employee costs. They, they have uh, um, compliance costs in time to make sure that they're, they're uh, federally you know, doing, following the letter of the law because they've got employees. Yeah. Um, big risk, big reward, right? Mm -hmm. So- the reason why I started with real estate first is it's ideal to have a lot of knowledge before you invest in anything, but you don't have to have a lot to get away with and still make some money in real estate, right? Well, when and, you're and investing I think there's a lot a business, of like, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's the agents and the lenders, everybody that can kind of help come alongside you. Not that the, you don't have that in a business opportunity, mm -hmm. but it's, it's far more. Well, if you think about why somebody lets you be in an ownership position of any kind, whether silent partner or not, uh, you have to bring something to the table right. to be offered that, right? So when you think in terms of, uh, I'm going to be a silent partner, well, you're bringing the money. 
Mm-hmm. So you're putting a lot of risk on the line uh, because it's your money that you're investing in this guy or girl to not screw it up and lose and all the money. And why do they need? Why do they need? The, why, why do they need the money? Oh, that's weird. That's an interesting like, question. Like, like, why do you need the money? If you're a great business partner, why or Shouldn't person, you have the money. You should, right? And uh, I, th- I think I did a, a great podcast about all the mistakes I've made in my yeah, life in investing. Yeah. And investing in the wrong people is certainly a big piece of that. People that don't know how to manage finances. I mean, I, can, I guess I can see if it's a startup and like you know, this is our 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 baby and our brainchild. We're both we're both talented. Um, it's an unproven process, product, whatever. If it's a but we need some seed money, right? And but I, go to a bank, mm-hmm. right? Not if they. I mean, you can get SBA loans and things like that for sure. Uh, but there, there's got to be a business plan. There's got to be, you know, um, more. Here's the point: like, there's a lot of mom and pop shops that work out of the, out of the uh, yeah. garage, right? And there's people that are investing in those mom and pop shops because they like the idea of being an owner, right? Hmm. So I've seen uh, a perfect example. I know somebody. I'm not going to say the name. Uh, I definitely know him. That is a landscape landscaper. And this person crushed it, grew his business on personality and needed to, equipment because they needed more lawnmowers, more trucks, more blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So this other person steps in and says, well, I'll buy all the equipment and I want to rake on it. Mm-hmm. Good decision or bad? Well, I mean, if it's a proven, well, I get the equipment's probably really expensive. Depends. The uh, great lawnmower might a, be 5,000 bucks. A great piece of truck might be 50,000 bucks, right? It's a, it's a proven... I mean, there's already, the business is already there, Defined right? by what though? And this is the key. Defined by what? Oh, well, I mean, I guess I would look at like past history. How many, like what's the growth pattern uh-huh. and, and what got you there mm-hmm. and what the future plan is to sustain that growth mm-hmm. and what would need to happen for me to get my money back mm-hmm. or at least get the return I was hoping for. Cool. I don't know. And the only word that matters was not brought up <laughs> and that's- one? something I failed at early on in my investing and it's very normal and it's you invest based on profits. Like is the damn oh, business making yeah. money or not? Number one rule of business, make money. Yeah. Right. So a lot of people say, well, shit, he's got lots of yards and they're getting 20% more yards a month. Fucking awesome. But if all the money's being spent because they're mismanaging labor, mismanaging uh, truck costs, insurance costs, whatever. Yeah. And there's no profits. What the hell are you investing in? Like yeah. you're losing a thousand dollars a month. You just yeah. became an owner. You get to participate in the loss of a thousand dollars a month if they can't get their shit together. So when I said like mm. understand you, there's certain, you have to have higher developed skills yeah. to go into ownership of any kind. Mm-hmm. That's an example. You better start to understand P&L so skills. So I, I was going to say, so you, really example. you just start with, can I see your P&L? Yeah, and if they're not willing to show it to you or they can't produce one, well, don't warning one. signs, <laughs> warning <laughs> signs, yes. Um, you know, like, like think about like this. I invested in a, in a bar and restaurant that was full. And I lost 200,000 bucks. What, what do you mean full? Like when you walked in the restaurant, it was full. Oh, and like buzzing. it's full. Like, okay. like it was an operating. I was like, wow, Got this it. is awesome. So that's a perfect example. We want to make two more of these. Mean, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, right? and this I is lost. the one that like should have been a speakeasy, right? No, because it was one. off like different in one. a hole somewhere. Nope. <laughs> no, it was a bar and restaurant <laughs> in prime locations <laughs> in multiple cities, and it oh, was yeah. full. Yeah, and I lost my ass. So the point is, is like, <sighs> yeah. is it about the business plan? Is it about the person? Is it about the personality? No, it's management of money. Let like, me see that P and L, brother. Yeah, and are the numbers real? And can you investigate them? And do you have control of the money, or are you? How uh, do you uh, know if they're real? audits uh time you know the more you look at them the more you can like this is like this doesn't seem in order um like what do you think the biggest cost of most businesses is of most there's the two biggest costs labor is number one usually what's number two materials space space. labor and space are typically for a bricks and mortar type entity you know think about any kind of bar restaurant uh like a retail shop uh labor and space are typically the biggest expenses right so as a percentage of the revenue, you should have a good idea for this uh, industry, what's normal. Yeah. And if you look at enough of them, you get an you idea. Get a really like good idea, yeah. if a lease agreement is $25,000 a month on a $40,000 a month revenue stream for a restaurant, 
not a good business. More than 50% for the lease, yeah, that's a lot. you're screwed. And I've seen things like that before. Um, as opposed to 5 to 10%, okay. Yeah. Still expensive at 10 for sure. Mm-hmm. But four thousand dollars a month for forty thousand dollars, ten percent max. Okay, I can live with that space. And like, what's the max based on location, right? Like, well, and that goes back to more research, right? So, what I'm saying is, is buyer beware. Ego is expensive. You get the opportunity mm-hmm. to invest in a different person's business, and and uh, you can be taken for a ride more often than not. But the other piece is you being the, your own business, right? So. Um, I love people taking risks. I say, if you're going to take a risk, take it early and understand the consequences and don't put anything into it that you can't live with. If you can't walk away from it and like say, you know what? I lost my ass, but it was a great learning lesson. I can still not kill myself over it. No big deal. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'll encourage my kids to swing hard and miss big. Like I'm okay with that. As long as you, you know, my son was telling me about uh, a poster on his teacher's wall that I love. And uh, I still have to work on him all the time about this, but it's a uh, Muhammad Ali poster. And all it says underneath is, you know, the famous picture of him standing over a guy on the ground. It's a, and it says, uh, you don't lose getting knocked down. You lose if you don't get back up. There you right. Go. And so that's what I mean by uh, being an owner. And you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. Oh, so cliche. I love it. Yep. <laughs> um, but that's the, so true. Right. And um, but ownership <laughs> requires more skills. Yeah. Uh, but you think about all the biggest companies, the most valuable companies in the world. Um uh, you're, you know, think about anything computing or technology, almost all of them started in a garage for real. Um, but that's one of them. Okay. I love that. Just show me your PL. That's just such a great starting yep. line. Show me your PL. <laughs> well, I'm going to make this no, real not simple. Sh- not show me your P, show me your PL. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, it depends on what kind of business we're investing yeah, That's very true. I'm not, oh, even going there. I'm not even going there. Um, oh. Oh my gosh. The next one. Um, I'm going to skip over to this one right here. Okay. Um, so so uh, that would be invention. Invention. Yep. If you look at some of the wealthiest people Inventor. in the world, they invented something. Like when you really get down to it, uh, trademarking, um, you know, uh, creating, um, I just lost the word. Um, when you make, you patent. invent something, patent. Thank you very much. Um, actually patenting something that turns out to be very, very valuable in a space and you get a, a rake on it for perpetuity mm-hmm. or somebody buys it from you and yeah. write, writes a big check. Uh, invention is, is a real thing. Um, in fact, when you really look at some of the wealthiest people in the world, they invented something that changed the world, right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, not everyone's gifted to this, right? It, right. it, it, it create, it's requires talent, creativity, a firm understanding of a need and a space to fill. So like Elon Musk is, I feel like a great example of For this. sure. And if it's not him, it's people around him. He's more of a visionary, right? So he like dreams up shit that's going to happen because he says it's going to happen. And then people but, around him fill the space and the need because he's got the funding to buy it. So, uh, but what I think about is uh, pacemaker, right? People are falling dead, dying everywhere from heart attacks. Oh shit, I'll just go ahead and invent something that keeps your heart beating. Like when it stops, it wakes yeah. it back up, Right. So the guy that invented the pacemaker, guaranteed wealth. Or an insulin pump. Or an insulin pump. Well, I thought you were talking augmented breasts. That too. <laughs> that guy's probably really rich too. <laughs> Find a need, fill it, right? Need. Literally. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was a funny joke. I laughed for real. That was That's because one. it was off flavor, taste, whatever. What is it? Off taste? My jokes are just too classy for you typically. <laughs> typically. Typically. They're too clean. You just don't get them. Yeah, so invention is something that's real. You know, you t- you pay attention. Uh, and, and invention, I would put into uh, just creative space in general because there's a lot of people that are making money. And this is not an endorsement for it because I don't like the space, but uh, creativity within uh, followers on social media, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they're uh, they're creating a conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just look at uh, Rogan. Okay. Yeah. Compensated higher. Mm-hmm than the highest paid athlete ever with his new contract, right? I mean, this dude is doing a podcast. He's doing this all day long. Yeah, and well, and he's smart, and he's got some unbelievable people that, that yeah, are sharing like, their stories. Yeah. Like, like Rogan Hero, over a $100 million guaranteed contract. Like, think about that to share your ideas in an eloquent way and get paid that level. That means a lot of people are listening, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, when I say in, uh, invention, it's probably invention slash innovation, I was say, innovation slash for sure. creativity, yeah. right? 
It's being different, finding something, creating something different that's out there. And that's hard to do. It's it is not hard to, to do. It is. Uh, think about book writers. It's still creative, right? Oh my gosh. Harry Potter. I don't know. I, I don't have the desire to write a book, but I, it's like when I think about someone forcing me to write a book, it seems like the hardest thing. I'm like, I just don't space. know how. Well, think about Stephen King. Like this dude's written a million and one scary stories. Wealthy and will be forever. Do uh, you know who makes more money? The uh, the the musician or the songwriter who makes oh money? the songwriter all yeah, day every long. T- he wrote the song one time. Yeah, you want to be the songwriter. Uh, I mean, not, not me. I want to be the star. But uh, well, actually, someone works for us, Gary. I don't know if you know this. So Gary's roommate from college, or one of his best friends from college, wrote Red Solo Cup. Really? Yeah, wealthy, not working. Do you remember that? He, great- he's actually got several number one hits, and he wrote simple songs like. Red Solo Cup. But you hear that a billion one times, whether I you like mean, it or not. I mean, every time he hears it, I guarantee he's happy. He's like, cha-ching, he's like cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Do you remember when we were doing our business planning out at your ranch with all the managers and I came up with the best line for a song ever? It was something about. Yeah, text to that guy. That's yeah. I texted Gary. I really. No, you, it was. Um, oh, no, Corey, I said it to Corey Morrow. Corey, yeah. Actually, that was a really good line. And I'm just wanting to know if there's any royalties I should be expecting because I could put those into my budget. Because it was you know really, it was really you good. You should have patented it. It was like every bar stool has should, a. Don't say it out, out loud. <laughs> it's not done yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but I want to know if he's using it. That'd be so cool. <laughs> no, I'll actually follow up and find out. <laughs> find I'll out. find out. I was thinking about that the other day. Um, but I can so, check that so, off my innovative so list. So for wealth, though, like you guys all get the point. If you have a creative bone in your body, if you're going to, you know, I bet you songwriters write 99 that never see the light of day mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and the hundredth sees the light of day and it doesn't actually make you money. And then you write another 99 that don't see the light of day and the, the next one. And it's enough of those, the last one that actually, you, yeah. you, you know, right place, right time. And there's a lot, a lot of creative uh, uh, innovations that people get wealthy and it never sees the light of day. For example, competing products that will dismantle a cash cow for a company. Like, I hate to say this, that the worst one out there is pharmaceuticals. Like, Are you talking about generic brands? Uh, I'm, I'm saying like, this is very controversial, but I, I know a lot of people believe this. It, like, it's sickening to think that, you know, cancer is a cash cow mm-hmm. for pharmacies, for well, pharmaceuticals. Let's just, talk, let's just talk about diabetes. Diabetes, for a it's, it's a cash cow for pharmaceuticals, for hospitals, for all that stuff, right? So if there is an invention of a, take this pill and you'll never have cancer, Mm -hmm. which I'm not aware has happened before, this cash cow that's making billions and billions will will buy that. To to hide it, it, to bury it. To bury it, right? Um, So my point is, is it goes back to create or innovate something that doesn't exist, that fills a need. and, And if it sees the right timing more than anything else, the right person, the right timing, uh, that's how wealth is built for sure. Um, what's the next one? The, the one I skipped. Um, reoccurring forced savings. Yeah. So uh, four and five actually kind of go together. But um, what I will tell you is if you go to, I'm trying to think in terms of, Josh, I'm too old. I don't want to be, I don't want to, or not too old. I don't want to invent something. I don't have the skill set to. I don't want to run a company. I don't have the, the mindset to do it or the desire to do it. Mm-hmm. But I want to be wealthy. Right. Yeah. Um, for savings works. Yeah. It, it does. Right. Like there's a there are millions of Americans that have their hobbies and dreams paid for because they in saved. later later life and retirement because they just saved, they saved yeah. started early and kept it up. Mm-hmm. Period. End of story. So that just goes by. It is mean, discipline. Being super it is discipline. discipline. It's discipline. It's just doing want. the right thing over time. You know the. And I love hearing that because that for a lot of people for is more most of us, tangible. Like it's, most, it's the okay, reality of it. It's hard, right? Mm-hmm. Discipline is hard. But if I am not risk tolerant enough to invest in a company and again, don't have, you know, I don't think feel like I'm going to invent something or whatever. Like this is something I can wrap my yep. hands around. Like yep. get better, be disciplined, open up the accounts, do the automatic siphons deposits that way it's happening behind yeah well the truth of the matter is is that it also is not income dependent as far as a specific income amount right big um i told this story a couple episodes ago about 
one of the richest guys I ever did a loan for was a janitor. That's literally the that's, story that's that popped it. into like my head. The janitor's the one that got probably, you know, if I thought about that conversation from 20, 18 years ago it is one of the reasons why I'm speaking on a podcast in 2020, right? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think about it, but the fact that you can be a janitor and save for a lifetime and be a multimillionaire because you just do the basics, you don't spend as much as you don't earn spend, over yeah. time. That is a way to get wealthy. So, you know, I guarantee you that he's still pinching himself. I can't believe I've got this much money in the bank. I you mean, know? Um, he's still pinching himself. So does that mean that he's probably paying for his hobbies and dreams? For sure. Yeah. Right? Uh, and that's goes that's to the fifth cool. element. And the fifth element, I really, I really firmly believe is uh, people get wealthy, five ways to get wealthy. The, 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 it really boils down to time. Mm. Time in investing, time in education, time mm. in studying, time in reading, time, time in watching and uh, oh. uh, YouTube videos or podcasts. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, in my opinion, time in creating an expertise. Like one thing that you stick with long-term. Like okay. one thing that I see all the time that happens with too many Americans, you know, is, you know, I get resumes all the time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I see on my resume is, oh, this person's literally had three jobs this year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They've had 20 jobs in five years. Uh, is, is that something I want to hire? Probably not. It's not going to exclude them 100%. Sure. But that's something I look at. And how can you be really good at any discipline if you're going to change every six months or three years? Right. Right. So the rule of 10,000 yeah, hours is it takes about 10,000 hours to become an expert at anything. Well, call that plus or minus 10 years mm -hmm. is what 10,000 hours is. And so... Uh, to be the best baker and uh, the best chef, yeah. uh, the best painter, the best plumber, mm -hmm. uh, the best musician, the best, the best, the best. If you're not doing it at least 10 years, 10 years. which comes back to time, mm -hmm. then why would you ever be, think that you're going to be compensated at a level that helps you get to that wealthy status sooner rather than later, right? I love uh, it's that. It's staying the course. It's staying the course. And so uh, not all of us are blessed that we that we found something that we actually enjoyed a lot to do long enough, Isn't which that in part is why people move jobs is they just haven't found what they're looking for. Uh, but the other in the spectrum is uh, I've personally experienced, I know I think you have over your career as well. You know, I've been doing this for 18 years now and about every third or fourth year, I'm like, oh, man, I want to do something else. <laughs> like, I'm just tired, right? Um, and I have to pinch myself and remind myself of, Staying the course, stay the, stay the, stay the course, yeah. course long term is, yes. is and, and learning to love the grind, not the result or the outcome. And all those things we keep talking about are. And then just pick up a passion project to get you through the, yeah. the hard time. <laughs> well, and here, here's one aside for, you know, all, all laughter aside about that. Um, never make a decision in a bad moment or a downtime. I mean, for real. If you can make a decision for a job change while things are going well, mm -hmm. it's probably the right decision to make that job change. Yeah. But if you're in a down spot of I, I'm not in line with my boss or, you know, this isn't fun for me or whatever, like fix it and get back to good. And then, and then, then assess your life. Right? That is so true. Uh, I think that that applies to marriages. Every, More, I was like, going to say it applies to everything. Like it's, every time I've got a friend or a, it's almost always friends that are like, hey, I'm bitching about my wife today. It's like, okay, cool. Don't make any big decisions today. Yeah. Like, don't make any big decisions. Don't talk to her. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah, like, don't say don't, anything. Right. <laughs> like, figure out how to be off. happy again. And once you're happy, then, yes. then reassess. And what I found for most people is when they're in the happy spot, yeah, actually that bad spot wasn't that bad. It Looking wasn't back, that bad. Yeah. In the moment, it's the only thing. Horrible. Looking back, it was never horrible. that big deal, Right? Horrible, horrible, horrible. So time, yeah. time, time makes people wealthy. And think about that again in all areas. It requires time for love. Like really deep love, like appreciation of people. It takes a lot of time. Uh, it takes a lot of time to get in shape. It takes a lot of time mm -hmm. to make money. It takes a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot it of time. It does. It really does. And uh, and there is no shortcut. You know, I and this I goes back the, to learning, loving to learn the grind, learning rather to love than, the grind. Yep. Rather than the get outcome. Quit, or, yeah. And that's why I don't like. You know, I I like HGTV. I don't like the let's become a millionaire in a week HGTV crap. Right. You know, the, the example I'll, I'll give you is in San Antonio real estate, there's probably 13,000 agents in San Antonio mm -hmm. and most are horrible. Yeah. Like not all. In fact, there's a great group of realtors. There is. But there's 13,000 13, agents 000. and there's probably only four to 5,000 home sales a month. So yeah. the odds of working with a good agent are not great. Well, why are they doing it? Because it's fun, because I can get rich quick or whatever else. Something to do. Something to do. And it's, it's easy. Not their, I like people and I like houses. It's the That's easy what button. they say. That's the easy button, right? And but that that idea applies to everything. Yeah. Hey, I, I want to go back to school to become a chef because I like to cook. 
Well, do you really? Because you know what the hours are for chefs? I mean. Like you're getting there at four for a great restaurant <laughs> and you're staying there till two at a great restaurant. Yes. You know, so, yeah. and you're prepping for the next day. You know, the best barbecue in Texas is out of Austin. The guy starts kicking the brisket. <laughs> He's there all night long. At four o'clock, at four o'clock in the oh afternoon. Oh my gosh! To serve that, noon tomorrow. You know, barbecue man is no yeah, joke. It's no, no joke. joke. So, was this helpful for answering that question for our yeah our, our followers? Okay, absolutely. Cool I'm trying to figure out which one do I want to do next. Well, don't do the illicit drugs. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna. I was going for the side hustles. This is you know, side hustles. Then you can yeah. teach me how to launder. <laughs> watch tv shows that. i don't mat. do that crap have you started secession yet Succe- I've not. have we did decide did we decide if it's succession or secession i, I don't remember this conversation the same thing? uh succession and <laughs> succession are two different things okay but cool beans cool watch the show i think that's a wrap cheers Bye-bye.